fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at the Aquaman Sunken Citadel 4-pack from the Spin Master line for the upcoming film Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. So this is part of the 4-inch line of DC figures that Spin Master has been doing for years now. And this set is a Target exclusive, as you can see right here. And it does boast that there is an exclusive figure included. Now I'm not 100% sure which one it is. I'm kind of inclined to believe it's the Shark Man over here. But it could be this guy in the old-timey diver suit. We'll have to wait and see when they get some single figures released. I have not seen any single figures in store. This is the only thing I have found so far in store for this uh, line from Spin Master. But I'm kind of glad I found it first because if these guys are going to be released singly, I want to get the Shark Man. You know, he looks pretty cool. Uh, packaging, pretty simple here. I think you'd consider this plastic-free packaging, although the ties are very clearly plastic. So... Not really sure how that works, but there's no bubble for them to sit in. You know, they're just kind of tied onto this back piece of cardboard. You can reach in, touch the figures and everything. Uh, otherwise, just have a giant picture of Jason Momoa here. It's pretty omnipresent here on the box. Uh, over here on the back, you can see the four figures. Again, not really hinting at which one is the exclusive. But we get Black Manta, Aquaman, Shark Guard, and Manta Man. I don't know if Manta Man is like a foot soldier for Black Manta or if he's another character. I'll have to wait and see the film. Uh, but yeah, Manta Man. So there you go. He is trademarked. So maybe he's a DC character that I'm just not super familiar with. That is very possible. But uh, yeah, all four of these look pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and get everything out of the packaging here. And we'll take a closer look. So here are the figures out of the packaging. We'll start with the Aquaman himself. You can see he comes with this nice trident accessory. Uh, just molded here in one color plastic, but it has some decent detailing. Nothing too special, but not bad. Put that to the side for a moment so we can take a look. I think it's a pretty decent likeness of Jason Momoa. I mean, for a four inch figure, really can't complain. I mean, these figures are about eight to ten dollars a piece, so I think it did a pretty decent job. They have the different kind of streaks of paint in the hair there which I think came out pretty good. They have a little bit of bronze here on like the arms and the pecs. Kind of give that a little bit of definition. But overall, I think it's a pretty nicely painted toy. I mean, again, for $8 to $10, I think this four pack was $29.99. So technically they're even less than eight a piece and I can't really complain about that. Uh, articulation, pretty standard. Heads on a ball joint. You can look side to side, no problem. You can tilt a little bit front to back, but because of his hair, you can't really get much articulation front to back you have a hinge here in the shoulder pretty nice and solid you have a rotation as well then you have a hinge and a rotation here in the elbow the forearm and, and arm and hand are all one piece so there's nothing in the wrist nothing in the waist but you have a ball joint here in the hips so you can kick decently out to the side decently forward he does kind of have a butt flap i mean i'll be honest he's kind of got a little junk in the trunk i mean <laughs> he's got this like you know golden belt piece but it gives him a bit of a butt. But in any case, can't really kick that far back. You have a thigh swivel there. You have the similar kind of hinge. I will say to be careful with some of these, they're almost kind of like little ratchets. And it can kind of be a little difficult. And I'm afraid if you just kind of yank the foot back, you could end up pulling the, you know, the pin out of there. So be a little careful. You want to make sure you kind of hold it as you rotate it. I usually try to push back as I rotate it. But then you have a swivel there as well. So the elbow and the knees are basically the similar kind of joint. And then the boots are all one solid piece, so nothing in the ankles. But again, I mean, for a slightly less than $8 figure, I can't complain. I think the paint applications are good. I think the accessories cool. The face likeness is decent for an $8 figure. And all in all, it's just, it's a good 4-inch figure. I think they did a pretty great job with that there. Uh, next up, we will move on to Black Manta. He has a similar trident. It is not the exact same trident. It is molded differently, as you can see here. I don't know if it's the movie's about some kind of warring tridents or something. I'm not really sure, but it looks pretty cool. Again, molded out of one color plastic there, no paint. Black Manta himself looks pretty cool. Now, I didn't notice this till I got it home. But unfortunately, mine has a little bit of a paint mess up there in the eye. But it's really not too noticeable. It kind of just looks like sheen from the light, so it's not too bad. Now, the head's kind of on a ball joint. And you can get a little bit of movement out of it. But because he's got these hoses going into the backpack, that is going to limit articulation for the head. 
It looks really cool, though, so I'm not really that upset about it. Plus, I don't really need him to be looking all around. He's got massive eyes. I feel like he can see well enough. Uh, same kind of articulation here. You have the hinge and the rotation in the shoulder. His elbows are very tiny, and so I would definitely be careful when trying to bend this because it's kind of similar to the knees on Aquaman, but you have that same kind of swivel and elbow joint, but just be careful with it. Uh, he has ball joints in the hips, but he's kind of got these like massive pockets i guess for lack of a better term that kind of get in the way so he can't you know kick out to the side all that much kick out about that far he can kick decently forward uh but again he's got the butt flap so he can't really kick back got the thigh swivel there and then he has knees as well and swivel very similar to aquaman but yeah overall it's a pretty good looking figure i think the backpack looks good some nice paint there along the back He's got these little jet thrusters, and then he's got this kind of like forearm piece. I don't know if that's a weapon or a communicator or what, but it looks pretty cool. Oh, Aquaman's trying to fight him. He's trying to leap into the fray. Settle down there, pal. I'll have to fix that. But yeah, Black Manta looks pretty good. I will say I do kind of have some trouble getting them to stand. It's only because, like, the way, when their legs are just kind of extended normally, because the butt flap stops the legs about that far back, um, the feet, the way they are, like, you'd kind of have to, like, bend them a little bit and then maybe rotate the knee one click. But then they'd kind of look weird and squat, so I don't know. But I feel like if you just turn the feet, you can get them to stand pretty decently. There we go. Let me see if I just... And that's why it's nice to have those rotations there at the knee, because then you can kind of position the feet a little bit to help them stand a little better. That's not too bad. All right, next up, we'll move on to Manta Man. And I have no idea who this character is, but I'm guessing he's kind of like a Manta foot soldier, or maybe he's Black Manta's partner or something. I don't know. But I kind of like the look of the head there, like inside the diver helmet. I think that's really cool. It's pretty well detailed. Like, they didn't have to do that. They could have just had it be empty inside. But you can actually see the face. And I think that came out pretty great. The paint here, I think, is pretty nice. They kind of have, like, a rusted effect. With the kind of green mixed with the yellow. I think that looks really sharp. He's got these hoses that go around to the back. He's got a similar kind of thing with Black Manta. Where you can't move the head around all that much because of those hoses. But you can move it a little bit. But I think they actually did a really nice job with the paint applications, especially on these, like, shoulder guards and the helmet and the chest. It's really cool. Then you have this little bit of thin line of green there. I would say his articulation is the same as all the others. I don't, like I said, the head's a little restricted by those hoses. The shoulders are a little restricted by those shoulder pads. It can only get about 45 degrees. But then his elbows, hips, he's got thighs, swivels, uh, knee joints, they're all the same. So, yeah, he's a cool-looking dude. I don't know what he's going to do in the movie or who he is in general, but he's got a nice range of motion in the hips. I will say he's probably got some of the best hip articulation out of the set because he can kick pretty far out to the side. He can kick pretty far forward. But, yeah, he's a, he's a cool-looking figure. I, I definitely don't know who this character is, but I like a sword accessory. Again, very basic, molded in one color plastic, but it looks good. So, yeah, I don't know who he is, but I like him. I'm a fan of Manta Man. We'll have to see what he does in the movie. But yeah, he's a cool looking figure. I like him a lot. So again, I don't know if Manta Man is the exclusive or the Shark Guy is the exclusive. I'm willing to bet it's not either of these two. But I'm going to kind of guess it's the Shark Guy because he doesn't really have full articulation. Um, but he is a hammerhead shark. So very, very cool. I really like the look of this guy quite a bit. I mean, look at those teeth. The mouth, just something super kind of creepy about that. Then you have the eyes. I think that looks really cool. He's got this chest harness. Also, the kind of shading on the chest with a little bit of white. The paint looks really good. Really nicely done there. So, you can't do anything with the head. That is, you know, solidly into the body. No mouth movement, no head side to side, nothing like that. You do have the hinge here in the shoulder and the rotation. And then you have the same kind of hinge and rotation in the elbow. Hands, nothing that's solid. Now, 
He's got these weird hips. He can't really go out to the side at all. You can kind of click forward, but that's it. And it just kind of like one ratchet forward and then one ratchet back, and that's really it. It looks like he's got thigh swivels, but it doesn't really move because of the way this like pouch is molded in. You can kind of see it like connects down to this. So even though it almost kind of looks like it wants to move, I wouldn't try it. I don't think he's got thigh swivels, but you can kind of kick forward and that's about it. And then he does have the same knees that everybody else has where he can kind of come down side to side. But he's just a really cool looking dude. I mean, I like all these pouches here around the belt. I think that looks really sharp. He's got the giant shark tail out the back. This is a solid piece. No articulation in that either. You can't really go out to the side with the hips. You can really just click forward and that's it. But again, he's got the cool webbed feet. So he's not great for articulation, but I think he looks neat. And I think the paint applications really turned out great. All here on the neck and the chest, the harness, the belt, the head, the mouth. All that looks really cool. He, he's just like a shark foot soldier, I'm assuming. He comes with this kind of alien looking gun. But... He's cool, man. I would definitely love a way to, like, army build four or five of these and just have, like, you know, Black Manta leading a squadron of these guys. Really, really cool. I like him a lot. Doesn't have the best articulation, but he's a really cool-looking figure. I think he turned out great. So I thought it would be fun to do some size comparisons, just kind of, you know, some other figures that are out there just for fun. Uh, we'll start with some other Spin Master DC stuff. Here is the Flash from that movie line. You can see scales very well. Here is Blue Beetle from their very minuscule Blue Beetle movie line, but still a good figure. Uh, here is a Mandalorian Death Trooper, I think. This is one of, um, I almost said Thrawn, not Thrawn, I've been watching Ahsoka. One of Maul's uh, Mandalorian. So you can see, I mean, he does have the spikes, but otherwise these would be three and three quarter inch, and these would be four inches ever so slightly shorter than the others. Uh, here is Sala from the Indiana Jones retro re-release line. You can see he's a little bit shorter. Uh, here is a core class Transformer. And then just for fun, here is a G1 Action Master. So you can see they're all kind of roughly in that three and three quarter inch, four inch Scale perfectly well together, I think. Um, to me, three and three quarter inch, four inch isn't usually super noticeable, but obviously these would be four inch, so they'd be ever so slightly taller than the three and three quarter inch figures, but in my mind, all these look really fun together. I think this is a really fun set. I like these figures quite a bit. I think Spin Master's been doing a pretty great job with their DC four inch line in general. It's been going on for years now. And it's always nice when a movie comes out because the Batman like ongoing line has gotten a little stagnant. It's pretty much just variations and repaints of Batman and Robin and the Joker at this point. So that's a little disheartening. So when we get something like this for a new movie where we're getting new characters and brand new figures, I'm always really excited. And I think this worked out really great. I mean, first of all, $29.99 is a fantastic price for four figures. They have accessories, which is really nice. Now, granted, it's one per figure, but that's all you need. I'm not really upset by that. Uh, normally, like I said, these figures are like $8 to $10, usually around $8. So to kind of get four of them for $30, you know, that's $2 off. I'm happy with that. I think the paint applications look good. The articulation's good. Um... I don't really have anything to complain about. I believe the Shark Man is going to be the exclusive figure. I would assume we'll see these three singly carded later on at some point. And he's not, you know, the best in terms of articulation, but he just looks really cool. It's a great design. Paint applications are sharp. And, you know, who doesn't like a Shark Monster Man? I mean, come on, it's great. I, who can complain with that? So I definitely think this set is worth checking out if you've been collecting the DC Spin Master 4-inch stuff. Definitely add this one to the collection. Plus, you can get Aquaman. I know we had seen him previously in that, like, WB movie six-figure set. And we thought he was going to be locked to that. And I'm so glad that he's not because I already had, like, 90% of that set. I think the only one that's exclusive to that is the uh, Shazam Fury of the Gods version of Shazam. Really, really still surprised that didn't get its own four-inch line. I would have loved to have gotten the whole shazam in four-inch from Spin Master, but... Uh, didn't didn't work out. They could have they could have snuck in a Gal Gadot Wonder Woman as well. Uh, spoilers, I guess, if you haven't seen that, she makes a cameo. But in any case, 
That pack is weird. I don't have to buy that now. This is a great set. Price is right. I think the great figures, great articulation. Not really much to complain about this one. So if you're a fan of the Spin Master DC stuff, definitely check your local Target because this is a Target exclusive, but you're probably going to want to check this one out. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.